The mesmerising Iguazu Falls are without doubt one of the most spectacular places we've ever had the fortune to visit. They extend for nearly two miles on the border between Brazil and Argentina. Both countries make claim to the most impressive sections of Cascades, but in reality they are equally stunning. This is the largest system of falls in the world, with at least 275 different waterfalls in high season. They result from volcanic activity that created a huge loop in the Iguazu River, whose meandering course prior to the falls can best be seen from the air. The area is protected by national parks on both sides of the border. We stayed at the elegant Hotel Cataratas, situated within the national park on the Brazilian side. It's expensive, but is situated directly across from the cataracts. With our excellent guide Marcelo da Rocha, we explored the area on our first afternoon. Along the path were plenty of coates, searching for food left by tourists. A trail leads to the Brazilian side of the Devil's Throat, the deepest section of the falls, where 14 different waterfalls drop by over 100 metres. walkway leads across the midsection. Above the Devil's Throat, the river opens out. An old damaged section of walkway visible on the Argentinian side is testament to the immensely powerful forces involved here. Old trees uprooted by floods were a good perch for the local white-winged swallows. A restaurant area nearby was a good spot for a giant cowbird to forage. And in nearby bushes was a male shiny cowbird. Along with this one of a few scaly headed parrots. And a red rumped cacique. This was the end of the trail, and by late afternoon we walked back to the hotel. With most visitors now gone, a few more birds were on show. Amazingly, this toko toucan had a nest hole right alongside the main viewpoint. It only showed though, once the throng of tourists had disappeared. They are the world's largest species of toucan.
The very attractive plush crested jay was common here and very approachable. Like the coatis seen earlier, they are clearly used to foraging for scraps left by tourists. The pale-breasted thrush is also common, but more wary. As the sun began to set over the falls, great dusky swifts gathered overhead. They are the iconic bird of Iguazu, and thankfully they were not the only ones we were to see. A pair of swallow tanagers then arrived in front of the viewpoint. They are very obviously dimorphic. The female is mainly green, yellower below with barring on the flanks. The male is electric blue, with a black mask and a white belly. They were an excellent prelude to a grand finale, a truly magnificent sunset. Early the next day we drove to the Argentinian side of the falls. This time we were part of the tourist throng. The national park here has more trails and arguably more birds than the Brazilian side. One of the first seen was this soaring snail kite. Then a rufous browed pepper shrike. Despite the shrike-like bill, they're actually a type of vireo. Not surprisingly, there were more coatis here. A boardwalk took us down to the Alvar Nunes Cascades. From here, there were views up the gorge to the Devil's Throat. The path passed close to the ravine, which had a distinct advantage. For the rock faces held great dusky swifts. They roost and nest in the relative shelter behind the curtains of water. Most were just resting, but some were at obvious nest sites. Roosting amongst them was a single white collared swift. This species is even larger than the great dusky swift and is rarely seen perched away from nest sites.
The trail led on to an area of terraces with truly magnificent views across to the series of falls that lie east of the Devil's Throat. After lunch, we took the small gauge railway that runs from the park centre to the Argentinian section of the Devil's Throat. A walkway led across the upper sections of the Iguazu River. Flush crested jays appeared around anywhere that tourists might stop to eat. The plush crest is a bushy mound of stiff feathers. Black capuchin monkeys have much the same intent. An Amazon lava lizard was on rocks by the walkway. Lots of butterflies gathered around a pile of snail shells, discarded by some unknown predator. Nearby was a large gaudy caterpillar, possibly a type of swallowtail. At the edge of a marshy area of the river was a preening limpkin. A female versicolored emerald. And a fork-tailed flycatcher. The walkway ended at a lookout at the top of the falls where there was a roost of American black vultures. From here, it was obvious where Iguasu got its name. In the local Indian dialect, it means big waters. Before returning to the hotel, we called in at a hummingbird garden, a private haven in the town of Puerto Iguazu. There were seven species of hummingbird on show here, like this male black-throated mango. They're one of the most widespread hummingbirds, ranging from Panama to northeast Argentina.
gilded sapphires with a bright red bill tipped with black. They also have a golden coloured tail, only obvious at certain angles. A couple of swallow-tailed hummingbirds. This larger individual was a male, and this smaller, slightly duller one, a presumed female. A male versicolored emerald. A grey throat could turn to glittering green and blue with a simple twist of the feathers. And also seen at the feeders, which was the only place that a black jacobin would appear. It could never be found perched. And finally, a Planalto Hermit. As with the Jacobin, it was only seen visiting the feeders. There were also plenty of banana quits. Fruit feeders attracted violaceous euphonias. A pair were present. At first only the male was to be seen. A beautiful combination of violet blue, hence the name, and yellow. The female is not safely separable from thick-billed euphonia, but thankfully that species resides further north and west. A male purple-throated euphonia also appeared. The head lacks the violet tones of violaceous, and of course the purple throat is a key differentiator. Plus Sayaka tanagers. Firstly, an adult showed well, and then a much greyer and duller plumaged juvenile. Finally, a saffron finch perched well above the feeders. We had a day away from the falls at the Uruguay Provincial Park a drive of about a hundred kilometers from Iguazu into Argentina. It's an area of Atlantic forest habitat around the Uruzu River. One of the star birds here is the black-fronted piping guan, and we soon found one close to the bridge near the entrance. We were to see five of these increasingly rare guans over the course of the day. A sharp-tailed stream creeper was also by the bridge. From its behaviour, we assumed it was nesting nearby. There's a good trail system leading into the main forest, with plenty to see. Such as this female blonde crested woodpecker.
a pair of ochre collared piculates. A few white rimmed warblers. also known as white-browed warbler. Both names refer to the distinctive face pattern. Golden-crowned warbler. A southern bristle tyrant. A southern ant pipit very similar to the ringed ant pipit that has a more northerly range but with a different song. And this one of at least three white-eyed foliage gleaners. The trail eventually reached the river. Where we found a chestnut headed tanager. A singing chivy vireo. and had excellent views of a rufous-crowned greenlet. Back near the car park was a strutting rufous honero. In the afternoon, we walked the Isla Malvinas Trail, where a female Surakua Trogan performed admirably. Here, they are of the southern red-bellied form, followed by a drab-breasted bamboo tyrant, with its distinctive pale laurel spot. Then, a superb male blue mannequin. It had taken a lot of patience to track down this calling individual. A long forked tail provides the basis for their alternative name of swallow-tailed mannequin. Female blue mannequins are often confused with this species, a greenish chiffonis. They often occur together, although the call is unmistakably different. Back at the car park again, we found a couple of female swallow tanagers. On our return to the hotel, we located a common potu around the entrance to the National Park. Over dinner, we were entertained by a thunderstorm, lighting up the sky over the falls. By morning, the light show had become torrential rain, putting pay to a planned pre-tourist invasion visit of the falls.
a male chestnut-bellied euphonia, was one of a few birds on show nonetheless. along with a green-headed tanager. A tower at the hotel provided views over the roofs, where grey-breasted martins braved the weather. There was an obvious population established here. The hotel grounds can produce good birds in the right conditions. There is a colony of red rumped caciques. They were nesting in palm trees by the swimming pool. By early afternoon the rain began to subside and a southern lapwing came out to preen on the lawn. A pale-breasted thrush then also appeared. followed by a chalk-browed mockingbird. This is an adaptable species not normally associated with forested habitats, but regularly seen in parks and gardens across its range in eastern South America. And lastly, a boat-billed flycatcher. The bill is best appreciated from below. By mid-afternoon the rain had cleared enough for American black vultures to take to the wing. This was to be our last view of these magnificent falls before it was time to bid goodbye and begin our journey back to the UK.